Hello everybody, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing my uh, top 10 books of Q2 of 2022. So this is April to June of 2022. We'll go right ahead and get started. Dane reads. So in at number 10 we have Cycle of the Werewolf by Stephen King. So this was fun because it's a little bit different to King's other stuff. Um, it's more like, it's not even a novella really, it's like a series of short stories that all fit together in a cycle, one for each month, um, that are illustrated by these really cool illustrations. Uh, the illustrations added a lot to it, I don't think it would have been published without them really. I think really it wouldn't have made it in any of his like short story collections or anything like that, but it was still pretty cool to check it out. Uh, yeah, it was, it was aight. In at number nine, we have Emma Timpany, Three Roads and Other Stories. So this was sent to me by uh, Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Press. Really cool collection of like literary fiction style short stories. Had a lot of fun with it. I also uh, interviewed the author for my radio show as well. And um, yeah, it was talking about like the idea of trivia. So the word trivia used to mean literally three roads in Latin. Um, and that was kind of one of the concepts that brought it all together. Very cool. At number eight, we have Fool's Paradise by Zoe Brooks. So this is another book that Isabel sent me, funnily enough. Um, this is like a poem um, that is uh, written in the form of a play, and it, in ha it has in fact been performed as a play as well, which is very cool. I haven't really seen anything like that before, um, and it was just very well written. It's also one of like Brooks's older works, so it was cool that she, you know, she still got some use out of it and still published it. Um, so yeah, I would recommend checking that out. At number seven, we have Christine by Stephen King. So you know, haunted car story. It's one of the few like well-known King stories that I've only recently got to um, I, I yeah I just really enjoyed it I read it while I was away in the forest of Dean as well it wasn't particularly scary um, but it was just well written and the characterization and it was great as well and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it. I have the movie to watch I haven't got to it yet but I will do soon at number six, we have A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. So this is non-fiction about him and his friend Kat walking along the Appalachian Trail. Uh, very cool because I have a friend slash client who lives in Appalachia as well. And I just do enjoy these kind of travel writing books. Um, yeah, again, it was really well well written. Very interesting. Lots of information as well that you can take away from it. They didn't walk the full trail in the end, but apparently not many people do because it's a very long walk. But yeah, really cool if you want some like, you know, travel writing through the Appalachian Mountains. Are they mountains? I should know this, I read it. At number five, we have Skeleton Crew by Stephen King. So this is a collection of King short stories. My edition of it, weirdly, it cut off in the middle of the mist, which is one of the stories I've been really looking forward to getting to. So I had to get another edition sent to me via Amazon Prime. Um, but I did really enjoy The Mist. I prefer the ending of the uh, movie, I must say. Um, but it's one of my favourite movies as well. Uh, it also had uh, The Jaunt, which is the first kind of exposure I ever had to Stephen King. We studied it while I was at university. Um, and so it was really nice to revisit that as well. And the rest of the stories in it were great as well. Just a solid collection of King sort of short stories and novellas. And number four, we have Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw. So this is uh, what My Fair Lady, the musical, is based on. It, it follows the story of Henry Higgins, uh, a guy who's like a, I guess you call him like a linguist. Um, it's like into enunciation and all of that. He, he teaches people how to speak and observes how they speak. And he takes a cockney flower girl called Eliza Doolittle and takes on the challenge of passing her off as like, you know, uh, the English aristocracy basically. And it follows what happens after that. And it's pretty good. At number three, we have Five Patients by Michael Crichton. So this is a non-fiction book written by Crichton towards the end of the 1960s. Uh, he was a medical doctor or practitioner or whatever. Um, he actually created the show ER as well, and that's obviously based upon his experiences in the, in the healthcare industry. Um, but in Five Patients, he basically follows the progress of five different patients through the hospitals that he works at and uses that to make some sort of predictions about the future of healthcare, essentially. And given that I have worked on a book for a client called The Future of Healthcare, it was just really fascinating for me to, to kind of see that, you know? At number two, we have Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. So I listened to this via an audio book. It was very funny, very well written. There was kind of a lull towards the middle of it, um, but I don't know, I, I was kind of expecting that. I'd heard a lot of different things, so um, it was it was good to finally pick it up and to read it as well. I love the name Lieutenant Shyskopf. I love how, um, you know, he kind of takes the piss out of the, the red tape in the army and all of that kind of stuff. And I can see why it's considered such a classic. I do think it's one that, you know, pretty much everyone should read. 
And at number one, we have A Kiss Before Dying by Ira Levin. So um, this is a thriller novel, but it's a thriller novel that kind of breaks the rules a little bit. It's really interesting. We see somebody commit a murder towards the beginning, and then we have a POV shift, and we don't know who it was that had committed the murder, at least until a bit, a bit of the way in. So it's kind of like a... Kind of a reverse who done it in many ways. Um, it did a really good job of again this playing with this point of view And it was just a really sort of I can see it as a groundbreaking read I can now see why Stephen King was so like uh, Inspired by Levin I think as well as being a really great horror not, uh, writer with books like Rosemary's Baby and um, The Stepford Wives he's also a really good thriller writer as well And that's kind of the way that King's career trajectory has taken him so there we have it, those are my top 10 books of Q2. I will be back with my top 10 books of Q3 and Q4, and then at the end of the year, I do my overall favorite books of the year. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.